Over the years, there have been incredible games that come as a third entry in a game series. Whether it's the end of a story trilogy, or the ultimate game that perfects everything that came before it, the word threequel might sound like a dumb word, but it can represent something incredible. I mean, we're talking about games like Halo 3, Mass Effect 3, heck, even Saints Row 3 was really good. So it's always really disappointing when a game series is starting to hit its stride by the time it gets a sequel, and while you're looking forward to what might come in the future, that third game never ends up being made. And with the way that the gaming industry is nowadays, this seems to happen time after time after time. Like for instance, Battlefield Bad Company was an awesome game and it had an even better follow-up in Bad Company 2. The story was just starting to heat up, like the narrative ends teasing the US getting invaded. Whatever comes next is going to be incredible, and then there never was another Battlefield Bad Company game, or at least not yet. This is just one example too. There's so many more that have these intricate details surrounding them that we're going to get into in just a second, but first, this video does have a sponsor, so let's pay some bills. So every week, Luke and I are very busy working and researching all the topics that we discuss in videos like this, which can make finding time to cook meals kind of difficult. So fortunately, this is where our sponsor, Cook Unity, comes into play. Cook Unity is the first chef-to-consumer platform, and they do something pretty amazing. They deliver freshly prepared, pre-selected meals right to your door every week. And they're easily the most convenient way to enjoy restaurants restaurant quality food from award-winning chefs all from the comfort of your own home. What sets Cook Unity apart is the sheer simplicity and convenience they offer. You can choose from hundreds of meals a week, all prepared by award-winning chefs. And the best part, if you're short on time or just can't decide, Cook Unity is more than happy to select meals for you based on your taste preferences. Once your meal arrives, they're already pre-cooked, so all you have to do is just heat them up so dinner can be ready in as little as five minutes. Their subscription is super flexible. You get to choose from four to 16 meals a week, and it's commitment-free. You can skip delivery pause them or cancel them at any time, no strings attached, and some subscription options start as low as $11 per meal. Luke and I recently got hooked on Cook Unity meals. For instance, I'm going to Japan for the first time soon, so I had the Japanese-style crispy chicken katsu with Japanese cucumber salad created by Chef Chase Evans. We also tried things like Korean flink steak, rice bowl with asparagus, courtesy of Chef Esther Choi, and we can't forget the penne with turkey bolognese with chili de arbol cooked up by Chef Dustin Taylor. All of these were delicious. So if you're eager to try Cook Unity and experience the convenience and flavor for yourself, here's all you have to do. Click on the link in the description and don't forget to use code rsloth50 at checkout to get a fantastic 50% off your first order of Cook Unity meals. Okay, back to the video. Before the days of Rainbow Six being this highly competitive tactical multiplayer shooter game, Rainbow Six was quite a bit different. It was more a first person shooter simulator with a strong emphasis on strategy. And while over the years, Rainbow Six would evolve quite a bit, Rainbow Six seemingly hit its stride when, in 2006, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Vegas released. This game was awesome. It took some of the best features of the original Rainbow Six games and kind of overhauled a lot of the mechanics like the health system, the camera view as third person was added in some sequences, and put players in a lot of really unique situations. Whether you're playing multiplayer, utilizing online play, which was a pretty big deal for console players around this time, Time. Having a headset to talk to your teammates was crazy back then. This game still had a narrative story associated with it, which was actually kind of badass. I really remember back in the day only ever hearing good things about this game, and while I didn't experience it till later on, I understand why it earned the reputation that it got. But then two years later, we would see a follow-up game in the form of Rainbow Six Vegas 2. This game was interesting. It also had a story, but this time we got to make our own character who would take on the operator role of a bishop, and this game seemed to just expand on all the stuff that the first game had, and this was really popular for a minute. This was one of the cool games that wasn't like Call of Duty or Halo in the late 2000s that you could play online. You could even plug up your Xbox Live Vision or your PlayStation Eye toy and take a picture of your face, and then have your face put on one of the characters in the game for multiplayer. I don't know if anyone ever actually did this, but that was a feature too. But you know what? While I thought the first story went hard, the second story for Rainbow Six Vegas 2 go 
goes even harder like there's so much going on with the plot there's covert operations there's mystery there's betrayal it has the whole package and then surprisingly after all of this there never was another rainbow six vegas game so of course fans eagerly awaited to see if rainbow six vegas 3 would ever be announced and it never came there was this weird announcement for a game called rainbow six patriots which wasn't really actually a game it's this whole confusing thing where there was like footage that they were using as like test footage of what they wanted the game to look like you know to kind of get a feel for what the game would be like not really something necessarily meant for the public to see but then it was all of a sudden at risk for being leaked and released so then they released it anyways themselves and then nothing came from the game for years and then they canceled the game and then Rainbow Six Siege was announced and Rainbow Six Siege took some of the aspects I guess of the multiplayer formula but then made it more like kind of Call of Duty search and destroy or like diffuse from Counter-Strike and then they put some other game types in there originally like hostage and secure area and you know what for what it is Rainbow Six Siege is definitely a cool take on like the first person shooter tactical genre but Siege only was a multiplayer experience there wasn't any real narrative associated with it other than like these little situations you could play that are no longer even a part of the game anymore while Rainbow Six Siege was great I guess for the IP and making Rainbow Six relevant again it also kind of marked the death of like the narrative driven experiences that you could play without having to match make with other players now there's really no hope of a Vegas 3 or anything like that I mean Rainbow Six Siege has been out for eight years and has had 29 different seasons and we did get Extraction which I guess would be the closest thing to a classical Rainbow Six Vegas like experience but I mean this really wasn't anything remotely close to that well rest in peace Rainbow Six Vegas 3 we don't expect to ever see you again but hey we can hope does anyone out there actually remember the prototype games by any chance prototype one was this interesting game where you played as this edgy character named Alex Mercer and you kind of like went around with these like superhero abilities and you could just like smash enemies and kind of do whatever you want it was actually a really cool game and even more so it sold pretty well too a few years later we would see the follow-up game in 2012 prototype 2 which had you play as a new protagonist who was actually kind of at odds with the original protagonist so it was like this huge marketing push to show that hey look you're fighting against the guy that you once played as prototype 2 expanded on a lot of the concepts and actually was a pretty big improvement over the first title though Activision seemingly put a ton of money into marketing this game they did a huge ad campaign they were really hoping that the prototype series could become a bigger and more established intellectual property the game launched and was actually the best-selling game for April 2012 but for the gaming industry 2012 was kind of this weird like in-between year before the launches of the new consoles and I guess ultimately Activision decided that the game didn't sell what they had hoped it would and ended up shuttering the studio radical entertainment altogether this is kind of a big blow to anyone who's a big prototype fan and hoping that we would in fact get a third entry into the game series so there's really not a whole lot of hope that we'll see a third prototype game made even though the universe definitely has room to make a third game within it there was kind of a quickly made remaster for the next gen consoles when the ps4 and xbox one released that weren't really that much of overhauls it was almost more of a port than a real remaster and since then the game series has kind of remained dormant but there could be an inkling of hope technically with microsoft acquiring activision microsoft could choose to take that ip give it to one of their studios and revive it even if it's outside of activision's branch but still that just kind of relies on the luck of the draw of microsoft choosing to revive the franchise and uh microsoft doesn't have the best track record at reviving franchises that they own the rights to we're still waiting for perfect dark wherever that might be one of the most obvious third games we never got of course was the third banjo kazooie game i mean we got banjo kazooie then i mean they did donkey kong 64 in the middle but people don't like to talk about that then banjo tooie the true sequel to banjo kazooie there was also a game boy game and this like racing game where you're in an airplane and then when everybody thought we were finally getting a third banjo kazooie game after xbox acquired rare we got banjo kazooie nuts and bolts okay you know what for what this game was it was interesting it was like a vehicle 
vehicle crafting platforming adventure game. And honestly, if fans had gotten a regular Banjo-Kazooie 3, maybe before this game released, or we knew a new one would be coming maybe afterwards, I think this game wouldn't be hated as much as it still is to this day. But it was just Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts was so dramatically different from what fans wanted for Banjo-Kazooie. Why use Banjo and Kazooie for something completely unrelated to what the IP was really known for? Nonetheless, a lot of people did have fun with Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts, and I'm sure there's a community out there who would love to actually see a sequel to that game in itself, just separately from the mainline Banjo-Kazooie game. For years and years, there has been cries to see Banjo-Kazooie not only return to its older art form, which finally did happen in Super Smash Bros. by Nintendo, of all places, but fans have wanted a third Banjo-Kazooie game for a long time. The Banjo 3E, which I'm still not sure that's the best name, but nonetheless, some of the original team who had worked on Banjo-Kazooie back in the day did go off and make Ukulele, which a lot of people supported on Kickstarter, hoping that that would be like the spiritual successor to Banjo-Kazooie, and I mean, the game was okay. It wasn't what people necessarily had expected, but there's still hope for a bombastic, larger-than-life platforming adventure collectathon like Banjo-Kazooie was back in the day that really just captures that essence and feel that we had when we were kids. It may be more specific and niche than maybe what some companies think making a platformer that recreates that feeling from back in the day, but I believe it is possible. A Hat in Time is an excellent example of a 3D platforming game that is released in the modern era done perfectly. Super Mario Odyssey can still pull off the 3D platforming collectathon as well. And there's no reason a game series as popular and loved as Banjo-Kazooie should remain dormant all these years later when there is an audience, both older and likely a newer audience, that would try this game out if it did finally see a new game. But it's up to Microsoft, and um, we know how they've treated Banjo-Kazooie so far, so uh, we'll just have to wait and see. Another game series that fans desperately want a third game to, but a lot of people forget this game series even existed, is the Darkness games. Man, these games were kind of a wild ride. It had this very like Lovecraftian vibe to it, and it was just like this dark gothic exploration game that was just a lot of fun in the first person format. I'll be honest, the first time I played this game, I was playing through the introduction. I didn't know what the hell was going on. And then there's this moment where this dude's like laying here and he's like, here, take my gun. And he like wants to tell me some like motivational stuff and pop I didn't even let him finish telling me what he was supposed to tell. That was supposed to be super sentimental. But I was surprised the game let me do it. I was, I was shocked. Usually these games like put some sort of, uh, I don't know, like plot armor on these types of characters. Not this one. The rest of the games were pretty popular. There was a sequel game that released and it was even more story driven than ever before. It had an amazing atmosphere and the ending of the game kind of left off on a pretty massive cliffhanger. And then nothing. Now some fans have hoped and really wanted to make the Darkness 3 come into fruition and have looked at everything that's ever been announced to see if there's maybe a hint of the Darkness 3 secretly being in development and honestly there's nothing except this one uh, commercial where if you look really closely it looks like the Darkness game is being put into an Xbox Series X and maybe that is the Darkness 3? Are those three lines? What's going on here? This is like two years ago. We've never heard anything about it since. It seems like the studio that made this game and other games like Warframe are busy working on their new game Soul Frame which still isn't the darkness three so i don't know if this series will ever actually come back but man thinking about the darkness and darkness two it's just kind of like a trip down memory lane one of the longest running memes on the valve side of things is the idea that valve well they can't count to three and i mean i get why when steam launched it was a massive platform pc players needed a place where they could just go and buy games in a mostly all-in-one marketplace but as steam became very very popular it seemed like valve shifted in being a game developer first to becoming a digital storefront first there was a time period where valve completely ruled the pc marketplace having counter Strike, Gary's Mod, Half-Life, all under their belt, and then from there they grew even bigger. But now it's rare we even see Valve games release. Half-Life 2? Episode 2 of course ended on a very notorious cliffhanger that fans have been waiting for literally decades now for a chance to figure out how it all ends, and there never was a Half-Life 2 Episode 3 or the infamous Half-Life 3, which I think Gavin really just never really wants to make it now. But it's not just the Half-Life 3 is never 
coming out mean? Even though we did get Half-Life Alex, which is a spin-off VR game, you know, to get more people to buy like VR stuff. It's a cool game, but it's not Half-Life 3. There's other games though that also probably won't get a third game because of Valve's shift away from developing games. Left 4 Dead 3 has been rumored to be in development on and off for years, and apparently there were prototypes made, apparently there was some progress made in development, there's been teases over the years. All of this stuff that has all culminated to nothing. Every time there's a new rumor about Left 4 Dead 3, that Left 4 Dead 3 is about to be announced, it always results in nothing. Like we still are, you know, thinking back to all the rumors that people talked about over the last couple of years just to find that there hasn't been a Left 4 Dead 3. Portal 3 is another one, that's not gonna happen. Team Fortress 3, I'm sure a lot of people would like that considering how much support and van fervor there is around Team Fortress 2, but uh, it took a lot of work just to get Valve to continue to support the existing Team Fortress 2 community, and that almost seemed like a bare minimum. Maybe Valve will change their mind and just release Team Fortress 3 one day, kind of like how Counter-Strike 2 just came out of nowhere, but until we see an announcement, I don't know if we're actually getting a Team Fortress 3. I don't think Dota 3 is happening anytime soon. Now, I'm pretty sure one day we will see one of these games that you see on the screen get a third game, but I don't think all of them will get three games. It's like one of the games has to kind of win like the Valve lottery and actually have a game make it further than the prototyping phase to actually enter real development and then maybe we'll see a release, but uh, we'll just have to wait and see on this one. I don't think we're getting any of these third threequels anytime soon. When it comes to serious, they never got a third game. Star Wars Battlefront actually got screwed over twice if you think about it. Obviously, you know, there's the more recent Star Wars Battlefront 2 that never got a third game and I don't think we'll get a third game giving all the outrage before release, even though I personally enjoyed the game a lot. But I actually kind of don't believe there will be a third Star Wars Battlefront game on this reboot series. But the original Star Wars Battlefront 1 and 2 were supposed to be a trilogy and there was a third game that was planned. With the success of the first two Star Wars Battlefront games, LucasArts wanted to make a follow-up game. So they hired Free Radical Design, who were known for the Time Splitters games, which are pretty good games, I think. And from 2006 till 2008, the studio actually worked on the Star Wars Battlefront 3. But during 2008, LucasArts had a major shift in management and there was a lot of moving pieces at this company. So they actually had kind of a falling out with Free Radical Design over the development of Star Wars Battlefront 3. LucasArts was alleging that Free Radical Design kept messing milestones that were planned for the game and Free Radical Designs accused them of stalling the development themselves and withholding payments to the company. And this apparently led to the falling out of these two companies and the project was scrapped in 2008. Now the story doesn't quite end there yet because after all this happened there was Free Radical Design developers that did say that Star Wars Battlefront 3 was actually almost finished. Which would be directly against what LucasArts was alleging about the missed milestones and stuff. But I do have to say we've never seen the Star Wars Battlefront 3 build as far as I know. So unless this 2008 Star Wars Battlefront 3 build leaks somewhere, I don't think we'll ever know what state the game was actually in when it was cancelled. Now, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic kind of seemed to me like another game that was kind of swept under the rug around the same time Star Wars Battlefront 3 was kind of cancelled. As I mentioned, the shift in management at LucasArts, they were kind of looking for a different direction and I think that's why we also never got a Knights of the Old Republic 3. Which is a shame because even though the first two games were developed by different studios, they were still very good games. I mean, you had Bioware working on the first one and you had Obsidian Entertainment working on the second one. And that's kind of linked to what I theorize is one of the reasons we never saw a Knights of the Old Republic 3. They also would have had to find a third studio that was on the same quality level as Bioware or Obsidian Entertainment at the time. And that would have maybe been another hard task on top of trying to change directions with the Star Wars games in general. And then more recently, the Knights of the Old Republic remake is also like on hold or cancelled. So it just seems like the Knights of the Old Republic had some bad luck over the years. So I think both these games kind of fell victim to the shake-ups in management at LucasArts at the time. But there's one more Star Wars game that actually was a little later that never got a third game either, and that is The Force Unleashed. And I think there's two major reasons why we never got Force Unleashed 3. One of them being that the second game just wasn't that well received. People thought it was kind of short and underwhelming compared to the first one. And then obviously in 2012, LucasArts got acquired by Disney, and then in 2013, LucasArts as a game developer closed its operation. So yeah, there's like these three Star Wars games that never got a threequel. I guess Disney also can't count to three. Okay, then there are the games that people always complain about and hope and want and expect companies to make, like, you know, Sonic Adventure 3. I don't think this game is ever going to actually come out. If it would have come out, I feel like it would have been a long, long time ago, unless like we see some true to form remasters of Sonic Adventure and Sonic Adventure 2. But of course, after how huge Sonic Adventure and Sonic Adventure 2 were and how well known they were for story and character development, unlike 
like any of the later games, people of course wanted to see a third title made. But honestly, while they never explicitly called any of the games Sonic Adventure 3 again, I feel like Sega multiple times kind of approached making a Sonic Adventure 3 without necessarily overtly saying it. Sonic 06 surprisingly was very close to the Sonic Adventure 3. You had three different characters who all played differently that you got to pick the stories from and then they all come together for one big epilogue. It's kind of exactly what happened in both Sonic Adventure 1 and Sonic Adventure 2. They even said that Sonic Unleashed took a lot of inspiration from the Sonic Adventure games, though I don't agree with it, and in Japan it literally even had adventure in the name. Does Sonic Forces count? Probably not, but you can see some similarities there, especially with the recalling of old characters from back in the day. I feel like Sega's willing to do anything and everything to avoid calling their new game Sonic Adventure 3, so it makes me feel like we won't ever actually get a Sonic Adventure 3, but fans can still hope. Maybe they'll finally do it and just pull the trigger and make something really built off and inspired by the first two Sonic Adventure games to take the title of Sonic Adventure 3. I feel like fans understand what that game would need and what the game experience should be like. It's just getting that idea across to Sega to make it, there's like this disconnect or something. I feel like it's such an easy shoe-in for a successful game, but I don't know. Marketing is weird. So some of you might remember the Scholastic Book Fairs if you were in like middle school or elementary school or primary school back in the day. My school did this weird primary school thing where they had kindergarten through second grade, like, in a separate building. But besides those scholastic book fairs, there were these little, like, scholastic pamphlet magazines that they would pass out at my school, and you could take them home and look them over with your parents, and then you could choose to order certain books. You take the pamphlet back with you with a check for the money and what you ordered, you give it to your teacher, and then, like, a couple weeks later, everything that you bought, all the books, are delivered to you at the school, and then you take them back home. I didn't always order out of these but every once in a blue moon there was something in there and I could convince my parents to you know get me the what's in there because I'm, I'm I'm a learning student I need books right well one year croc and the legend of the gobos was in my scholastic magazine for the PlayStation 1 and I uh, convinced my parents to let me order it and sure enough a few weeks later which felt like forever I got this game I mean sure croc was no Spyro or Crash Bandit Bandicoot or Mario 64, but it was, you know, like a mascot collectathon, and I was really into those. I always liked those types of games, so I remember playing it a bit, but also getting stuck and not knowing where to go. As it turns out, though, after the first Croc released, they did make a sequel game, Croc 2. I never quite got the opportunity to play that one, but it still is cool that the game did have a sequel. I think they always knew they were going to make a second game, because in the first game's, like, little pamphlet, it even talks about the sequel game already. But oddly enough, there never was another follow-up third entry in the Croc series. Argonaut Games, who made Croc 1 and 2, ended up taking on a lot of licensing deals to do game tie-ins. I mean, they did some Bionicle stuff, they did some weird stuff with Disney, they did some of the PS1 Harry Potter games. Heck, they even did a Catwoman game. Unfortunately, over time, it seemed like Argonaut Games had a harder time establishing these publishing deals that were essentially keeping the company afloat, and sadly enough, the company ended up going under shortly after the release of Catwoman the game. And uh, yeah, so Croc was just kind of laying in limbo for a very long time. I mean, I don't know if anyone really expected a Croc 3 in 2004 or something like that, even less so now in 2024. But then, randomly enough, the founder of Argonaut Games, Jez San, randomly tweeted out last year that there was an HD Croc game in development, and he said it was a little premature to talk about it. So maybe there's another croc game coming out could this actually be croc 3 coming out resurrecting itself from the grave well i guess we'll have to wait and see what's going on with this one when it comes to 3d mario games i always thought mario galaxy was the most unique out of all of them and i really enjoyed the sequel as well which isn't a thing we usually get for 3d mario games this is i think the only time a 3d mario game has gotten a direct sequel so that kind of makes it not that surprising that mario galaxy 3 never happened but it would have been kind of amazing if they rounded out the mario galaxy series with a third game and made it a trilogy i mean to be fair we're still waiting for mario galaxy 2 re-release on the switch but maybe just maybe there's this sliver of hope that I have that eventually they're gonna announce Mario Galaxy 3 and just release like a collection or something and to be completely transparent and fair I do have to say Mario Galaxy 3 has never been confirmed by Nintendo or even mentioned 
but I still want to keep my hopes up. You know, for a spin-off series, the Halo Wars duology of games actually are pretty popular amongst RTS fans. It has some really great looking graphics for the cutscenes as they're all pre-rendered. And then of course, it's like a regular RTS game, but with Halo things, and that's awesome. Halo Wars was really popular amongst RTS fans for a long time. And though Ensemble Studios, the company that had made it shut down, there were still hopes that Microsoft would revive Halo Wars and put out a sequel. And way later on, during the development of Halo Infinite, since there'd be a big waiting period between Halo 5 and Infinite, we got Halo Wars 2, which was a partnership between 343 Industries and Creative Assembly. And for the most part, fans seem to really enjoy it. So now that it seemed like there was another kind of successful Halo game that was releasing on the off years of mainline Halo games, fans hoped there'd be a Halo Wars 3. And as it turned out, there was a big pitch made by Creative Assembly for a third Halo Wars game that was pitched around 2017 and uh it looks like the pitch ended up being rejected because halo wars 3 never entered development and uh that was the end of that though there is some really cool concept arts that were later posted onto art station that were included as a part of the pitch kind of showing what creative assembly artists were thinking for cool settings surrounding what halo wars 3 could look like but uh yeah it never ended up becoming a thing it's not ruled out that halo wars 3 will never happen but back in 2021 when 343 industries announced that Halo 2's content updates would no longer be occurring and that they no longer would support Halo 2 with new updates or balance patches. They did iterate that there was no new Halo Wars game in production, but of course they did also point out that this doesn't mean that there will never be a new Halo Wars game. And uh, now we're just in limbo waiting. Any W for Halo at this point would be a pretty good W to have. Okay, so between the years of kindergarten and like eighth grade, the computers at my schools I went to always looked like this. Those like Macs that were bulky and uh, had those like little color plates on the back. What an incredible time to be alive, I know. But here was the really cool thing. A lot of these computers had an incredible game. One that if you were a console player or a PC player, you probably didn't get to experience. And we're talking about Bugdom. Now for some of you, I just like hit some like deep dark memory that you don't remember until just now. But Bugdom was this incredible game. You were like a roly poly in this giant land you're like actual size and you have to navigate like for instance the first level's a backyard and then from there you have to traverse the land avoid enemies or fight if you have to and then find the keys to exit the level as a kid i don't remember anyone really ever being able to figure out how to actually beat the first level but i do remember one of the older classmen told me about like a button you could hold down i don't remember which one it was that would bring you to a level select and that would give you access to all 10 levels in the game and man the rest of this game was incredible on some levels you're like flying on a dragonfly on other levels i don't know there's some weird stuff going on maybe this wasn't the coolest game but when you're in school you know beggars can't be choosers you're just happy to see a game that looks you know 3d compared to you know the other learning games that were available and bugdom was incredible apparently after bugdom's success though there was a bugdom too one i never got to play but i do remember seeing images of it online when i was younger when i looked up up to see if there was a sequel. I was always intrigued and I always wondered why the school computers didn't have Bugdom 2. Um, I don't know if anyone who was at our school knew why we had Bugdom 1 in the first place, let alone why they would ever update to a sequel, but those are the questions I was asking back then. I don't know if Bugdom 2 ever was as successful as Bugdom 1, but after that, there was never anything from Bugdom ever again. Maybe it didn't have the brand appeal where people were like anticipating a new Bugdom release. I feel like most people forgot that this game series even existed. Now the studio responsible for the Bugdom games known as Pangea Software ended up finishing up other games for Mac OS before pivoting into becoming one of the earlier adopters of making games for iOS. And they've released quite a bit of titles on iOS and they also have thrown some stuff up on like tvOS as well, which is kind of interesting. But yeah, I don't know. Will we ever see a Bugdom 3? I probably don't think so. And it's a shame too, because I feel like maybe if more people knew about this game series, they would have appreciated it back in the day. It has that old platformer 3D 
mascot type charm to it, which made it stand out a bit, which makes me think of another mascot type platformer game that uh, definitely did not catch on in the way that Microsoft wanted them to. But Blinks? Blinks was supposed to be Xbox's Mario. It was supposed to be the standout mascot to represent all of Xbox. And uh... Blinks didn't really do that well. They still gave Blinks a second chance with a sequel, which was kind of a lot different from the first Blinks game. And once again, while we don't think we will see a third Blinks game in the same way we won't see a third Bug Dumb game, we could still always hold on to that sliver of hope that for just some odd reason, someone out there gets the wild hair and they're like, hey, you know what? We are doing it. We are bringing it back. Let's bring Blinks 3 and bring it to the Xbox. I'm sure Xbox Series X purchasers uh, have all only purchased their Series X because they expect the new Blinks game to be an exclusive there. That makes most sense. Blinks was developed by Artoon, who was known for doing some other interesting games like Blue Dragon or The Last Story, but the studio became defunct when the parent company, AQ Interactive, ended up filing for bankruptcy. So no Blinks 3, even though I don't think Xbox would commission a Blinks 3 even if they had the option to, they might still have it. I'm not really sure how the rights management works for Blinks. I assume if Microsoft Game Studios published Blinks, which they they did for Blinks 1 and 2, then they retained the rights to the IP, but it was the early days of Xbox, it could be vague. Okay, then there's like a handful of other games out there that very easily could make a return. It's not totally unlikely, but we still haven't heard anything about getting a third title or a threequel like this video is based on. Now, since we've looked at a lot of these games already, I think it's interesting if we take a closer look at some of these games that are probably going to come out, I think, there's a higher likelihood they could come out. They might not be guaranteed, but still worth talking about. One that comes to mind right away is Wolfenstein 3. Yeah, which actually, I mean, I feel like that could get announced any day, like, honestly. It's it's interesting with Wolfenstein 3, because I felt like that game was like a shoe in as something to come out within a couple of years after Wolfenstein 2. And then there was like all the stuff that came out with Indiana Jones, that the studios would be working on that game, but I always assumed that would be after Wolfenstein 3. Also, they did the whole Youngblood spin-off thing, which was a different studio, and then it wasn't really good, and I feel like that might have stunt Wolfenstein 3 out. They also did the VR one, the Cyber Pilot or something. Oh yeah, I forgot all about that. But what I was gonna say is they showed off the Indiana Jones game like a couple weeks ago, right? Like, it, they're getting ready to finish it up, you know? So I think a Wolfenstein 3 announcement could, you know, be imminent maybe this summer. E3 time, who knows? Really, you think it's that soon? Yeah, I feel like it could be, yeah. I mean, Indiana Jones game is supposed to come out, like, probably... I mean, we know Microsoft, they announced their stuff early, right? Like, way too early, so... But they never co-develop games at the same time, usually, I didn't feel like. So this is kind of different. Right, right, right. That's what I'm saying. They might announce that they start development. Oh, that they start development. I thought you meant they're announcing, like, the finished game. No, no, no. I, no, 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 that's coming out. No, no, I just meant, like... That they're working on it now. I just always assumed that Wolfenstein 3 would have been, like, years ago, almost, that we would have had it by now. W Wolfenstein 2 came out in 2017, so it's been, what, like, five years already? Like, we're approaching six years and no announcement, officially, a formal announcement? But I do have to say, I mean, if it's good, I'll forgive it everything. Do you think Youngblood killed off Wolfenstein 3 before it even got a chance to run? Do you think that maybe they just scrapped it all together? I don't know. I mean, Youngblood was kind of meh, but, uh... I mean, I don't know. Do you think there's a hardcore enough fan base to make Wolfenstein 3 successful financially? I, I Well, I think so. I think what happened with Youngblood, they lost the casual fans with Youngblood. And like with Wolfenstein 3, they're going to get the people back because they're like, oh yeah, it's BJ Plaskowitz again. You know what I mean? Like, Right. I just wonder how Youngblood's story is going to affect where they go with Wolfenstein 3. I mean, they were setting up stuff. Yeah, sure. They're setting up stuff, but the lore in Wolfenstein, they, they could just do some like crazy time travel stuff and like it would all be good. I guess they could do that, yeah. There's a lot of options it can do. BJ Blazkowicz falls into a, another universe where, uh, you know, it's 2150 or something, you know what I mean? And like, uh, the you know, those people are still ruling. I don't know if I can say it in the video. Right, right. I think they've been setting up like the big mecha villain that we can't say in the video uh, for a couple of the games now. So maybe that's where they're going to try to like get to. And they have to make it take place later on for it to be good. I think, in that regard. Okay, Luke, I think we have very differing opinions on this next one. Oh, no. I think we are going to see it one day. Titanfall 3. 
you know, Why are you laughing before I even get to make a case for it? I'm sorry, it's like an herb legend. There are a lot of leaks of people saying Titanfall 3's announcement is imminent, and then it never comes. But I do think there's been, like, enough outcry from fans. Now, enough people, like, talking about it, where a Titanfall 3 would probably get picked up more if, you know, they did a good marketing campaign behind it, people knew it was existing, and maybe they do a tie-in with Apex. I feel like Apex kind of slowing down in its, like, momentum that it had after its launch. And maybe, like, they want to kind of do something that could also revitalize interest in Apex. And I feel like since they're in the same universe, Titanfall 3 could uh, could just do something really cool. I mean, it's true. But the thing is, um, the, or the thing I always see is, like, Apex Legends is so much more massive than Titanfall 2. So why not build out the t Apex franchise? And why build the Titanfall franchise? Been, honestly, Apex Legends has overtaken Titanfall. Yeah. Yeah, I just know that there is still a huge community of people. Oh, no, I'm saying there's a huge community on Twitter of people who like Titanfall. And, right. uh, I mean, that's fair. I mean, More they want the Titanfall Twitter. 3. I know. You can't just, just say, like, only I'm people just, on Twitter want Titanfall I'm 3. Just I'm just sure There's at least a couple other people besides Twitter users. Yeah, no, no. I mean, obviously, it'd be nice to have Titanfall 3, but, like, I just don't think it'll happen. I think it's EA. Apex Legends is so much more massive. Yeah, they don't make decisions like that where they're like, yeah, we have this like, you know, old IP or kind of old IP people like kind of feel nostalgic for. They're not, they're not going to revive it. They might remaster the first one or something, but like, I don't see a Titanfall oh, 3. No. <laughs> I just remember Titanfall 2 did this weird marketing campaign with Buffalo Wild Wings. I just wonder how much did that cost EA? You know what I mean? Where they're like, dang, this game didn't financially sell well. But they're spending money on, like, Buffalo Wild Wings promotions. With game didn't sell enough wings. Now we gotta stomp. That's why Titanfall 3 doesn't happen. Didn't sell enough wings. Okay, what about Nier? Like, Nier Automata, Nier Replicant. People have been wanting a third game for that for a while. I'm currently in my playthrough of Automata. I picked it up yesterday and played it a bit more. I'm stuck. I might lower my difficulty. But there's been a lot of people who've wanted to see a third entry of this game. And they were, like, hyping stuff up for a while. And people thought there was going to be a new game. And then it turned out to be like a mobile game. And now they just announced the mobile game is shutting down. I think there's a lot of fans that want to see a third game. I think they have the means to make a third game and it could sell successfully. But uh, yeah, I don't know what the whole side quest with uh, the mobile game was. But it just makes the wait even longer. And uh, But I do think we will see a third one one day. No, oh, yeah, no, I think a third one is. And I think they still do have to tell to make a good third one too. You know. I mean, maybe the mobile game, sometimes, you know, just got to try out stuff, you know. And uh, I guess that's what they... It's just weird that it's shutting down something that has, like, story that is important for the lore of the universe and stuff. Right. I mean, if they're really smart, they could include it in the next one as, like, a pre-summary or something, you know what I mean? <laughs> Make the mobile game a remaster of the mobile game. Or remaster the mobile game, I guess. So. Or, or I was thinking more like an opening cutscene explaining the mobile game where, like, a text pop up. I mean, what did what was near replicant? Didn't they just take like the source material of the game from 2012 and just remake the game completely? Yeah. Like it just in a better way. Yeah, you're right. Maybe they'll do it again. Maybe that's their Nick. process. You know what I mean? They gotta oh, make no. a weak game and then build off that. You know, make a good game. <laughs> make a game, make sure no one likes it, and then try to make it a good game. I mean, honestly, if the 50/50 on if their games are good, that's still better than 99% of developers. Okay, here's another one I wanted to run by you, and this one. I'm I'm split on because never, never is like a long time for something to not come out, right? Like, will there will this game ever exist? To say never is a long time. But Overwatch 3. I, I think so, yeah. I think so, yeah. You think there will be an Overwatch 3? Yeah, I think there will be an Overwatch 3. three yeah. You don't think, like, the backlash of everything that happened with Overwatch 2 might make, like, Blizzard be like, nah? I don't know. I don't see why. I, I could also see that they get rid of the 2 and just call it Overwatch again. They like, just go back to Overwatch 1 again? I mean, like, yeah, I mean, make it like a... I mean, because it was just a balance patch, right? So either they're going to double down and do another big, like, overhaul and call it Overwatch 3... Or they do another big overhaul and just call Overwatch, just Overwatch. You know, it's just Overwatch launcher or something, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah, I don't know about that one. That is a, a tough one. But I, I can't see an Overwatch 3, yeah. Honestly, like... Will it have a campaign? Ooh. <laughs> They're 
you're not gonna do it. Similar to Overwatch 3, what about Destiny 3? We're at the final shape, that's wrapping up. Are we gonna see Destiny 3, or do you think we're gonna just get more and more expansions within Destiny 2? Or will they pull what you just said with Overwatch, drop Destiny 2 and just call it Destiny again? Yeah, that's what I was thinking, like, cause like they did, they do always do this thing in Destiny where they're like, oh, this is the ultimate Destiny experience or something like that, right? Like Destiny 2 is the place to be type thing with all the content they added and stuff from the older game. And uh, they could be building on it, but I do think they'll eventually run into limitations, maybe. Because this is still the Halo engine in a, in a very weird way, right? I mean, technically it is still built off of the Halo engine. I feel like they would keep using the engine though, even if they made a new type. Right, right, but they need like an overhaul. And I think... When they do an engine overhaul, they're going to just release a third game. Well, they might have already done an engine overhaul at some point with Marathon. Oh, you think it's the same engine too? Yeah, they could, yeah. I'd assume it would be weird to switch engines, but they have their own proprietary one at this point. I mean, it's true. I mean, they could be developing an Unreal or something, you know? Yeah, they could. I, I just, I don't know. I feel like that'd be so different for Bungie to shift when all the talent knows how to use Tiger. But I do always want to see, like, I want to see what happens when a studio like Bungie does try Unreal. Maybe it could be beneficial. Maybe it could be good, you know what I mean? But I feel like there's so many other studios out there that would benefit from trying Unreal over what they're using that are should come first in line. Right, right, right. But the thing is, when... Okay, are you referring to Halo? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> so, okay, see, that's the thing. Like, I know they're not going to make a good game in Unreal, right? But Bungie might make a good game in Unreal. I guess so. But Bungie could still make a good game in Tiger, where I feel like 343 can't make a good game in anything. For sure, for sure. But I mean, honestly, Destiny 2 has had its uh, downsides too recently with a lot of um, people getting being let go, the DLC being delayed, the last DLC being atrocious. How many people do you think are going to get mad at us for saying that we don't think 343 can make a good game? I don't know. We're going to get at least a comment. At least at least one. Maybe two. Oh, and that was it for my list. That was it for your list. Oh. That was my list. I had uh, Battlefield Bad Company 3 on here because I also think that they will make it at some point. But I kind of talked about it at the very beginning of the video, so... Yeah, no, no, I think what will happen is, like, it'll be, like, a spiritual reboot, maybe? Uh, or, not fully. I don't think it'll be continuation of the story at this point, though, right? Yeah, it would have to just... It would have to be, like, disconnected. They could maybe have it take place with, like, that... As the premise. And that would be connected, but... Yeah, I don't know. It's weird. It's so weird how Battlefield numbers their games. I mean, they, they do the goal. And also, like, will it have a campaign even? They could make a bad company three before a campaign. Right, we don't even get campaigns. Yeah, I don't even know what I'm talking about now. I forgot Battlefield stopped doing campaigns years ago. Honestly, like, bad company were the only campaigns ever worth playing. So it would be very nice if they do continue making campaigns for bad company. I would like to see it. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree with that. There were some good campaigns in and out of there. Even the little, like, episodic things they did with Battlefield 1 weren't that bad either. Yeah, they were, they were okay, but, I, I, but the big company games would definitely peak, I think. It's like the Modern Warfare stories of, you know, Battlefield, kind of. Yeah, I get that. Uh, do you have a section you want to talk about? Yeah, I have a couple of games that um, um, I want to talk about that actually, like, kind of got a second game recently. And I want to know your opinion if you think they'll ever get a, a third game, you know? Okay, okay, let me hear. You know, like, The Evil Within got its second game. Uh, a couple of years ago. And then the company dropped that series off the face of the earth, right? Right, right, right. So what do you think are the, the hopes? What did they work on after that? They did the Hi-Fi Rush and did they were they people that made um uh, Ghostwire Tokyo? Yeah, they are. Oh. They did say they want to do another Ghostwire Tokyo, right? They want to do a sequel to that. Yeah, I, I'd like to see that first. I don't think we're going to see another Evil Within. Oh, that's sad. I felt like the buzz around Evil Within 2 wasn't big enough. You're right, you're right. And I think what, what it was, it was like... Resident Evil 5 and 6 were really bad, right? And people hated them. And then Evil Within came and they were like, oh, this is like kind of like a scary Resident Evil type game again. So people were like, oh, sh oh hell yeah, you know? And um, I think that's that now because Resident Evil has definitely gotten their stuff together and they're making good games now. This is the problem I have with the Evil Within 2, right? The reveal trailer or the trailer announcing the game. Like, if you don't know anything about the Evil Within, it is so confusing. Like, I think I'm watching like a fondue video or like something with like, like, <laughs> like, I don't know what's going on. It, it, it always felt like something. It's like, oh, I never played the first one, so I don't know what's going on with the series. So it's hard for like new people to jump in. So I don't know if they want to bring that back. What is the, 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 like, cream that's using that i don't know i think it's like symbolic wax like what really yeah, or like 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 the, you know the vex uh stuff from destiny oh yeah I, I, not a word i can't say that we usually describe it. it's like white liquid 
So we usually describe it with a word, but I don't no, think I can. I can say it. Stop, just stop. Okay, okay, okay. Let's go to the next one. <laughs> what about The Last of Us Part Three? Oh, is Last of Us fatigue like more mainstream yet? I think so. I mean, people. There's Last of Us One fans that hate the second one, right? Okay, spoiler. If you haven't played The Last of Us Two, we're gonna talk about spoilers. Anyways, Last of Us Two, they kill off the main character from the first game, right? So like, that's. That, that, that pisses a lot of people off, right? Right. And then the, you know, the character that I think in the first one was set up to be like, like a, what do you call it? Like a heroine? Like a female hero? I, I can't pronounce the word. Yeah, like a heroine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, she just kind of takes a backseat, I think. You know what I mean? So like, I think that rubbed a lot of people the wrong way that actually liked The Last of Us 1. So I do think it's more mainstream than people realize, maybe. I think we'll see a Last of Us 3. I think at some point, Sony's going to want to, like, pull out their cards to be like, look, guys, this is the year to buy a PlayStation. And they'll just be like, Last of Us 3. Whether it's PlayStation 5, like, all the last hurrah of the PlayStation 5, or Next gen. PlayStation 6. Yeah, I don't know. Also, they got time now that the uh, multiplayer, you know, spinoff is shut down or canceled. Yeah, the multiplayer spinoff. They'll just probably, I just, I think they're going to re-release last of us one and two remaster them again a couple more times and then maybe we'll see last of us three i mean we already got the first last of us two remaster right how does a game from 2020 get a remaster already okay another one then this is a big one and uh, this company doesn't make games too often so we'd have to wait a long long time for it i think but what about red dead 3 i think the obvious answer is to be like well maybe a while like four or five years after Grand Theft Auto Vice City. I almost want to go Vice out, City? Or not Vice City. Grand when is that coming out? I'm sorry, Grand <laughs> Theft Auto 6. It takes place in Vice City. I... Yo, dude, you know what's minute, extra also? It's how like, many minutes have we been at this? <laughs> I don't know. It's like VI. So it's like the, part, the beginning of Vice City, dude. Yeah, see, that's what I meant. Yeah, 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 uh, I, was just, I was spoiling the name of the game. Sorry. Yeah, let's talk about Red Dead 3. Because I think it'll take a couple years, right? Like I think it's not coming ever. It's not coming ever. You think it's gonna get bullied? That's what I was coming to. I think it's. I think. Uh, yeah. I think it's gonna get like put on the back burner, like Max Payne and all those other games. Damn. I don't think Red Dead Online was lucrative enough. I mean, they stopped supporting it. But I think the the base game sold so much, right? Like they don't care. They want the online service. That's where the real money's at. I guess. I guess so. They did. They 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 do be talking about like charging you hourly to play their game so but we know like during the development of grand theft auto 5 after the game came out and online came out there were story dlcs planned for the base game those never happened they later were incorporated into online red dead they had no plans of doing any story dlc there was no undead nightmare like red dead one had they were all about the online service and they just didn't have the player base uh like gta had and i think that they thought it would be different and uh yeah, that's why they just abandoned it so quickly. Yeah, it's sad, but I kind of, I kind of think that's a, uh, that's fair. You know, that's probably what's gonna happen. I will be pleasantly surprised if I'm wrong, and they do bring back Red Dead. Very pleasantly surprised, but I just feel like the way that they handled Red Dead Online, it wasn't really the best. Remember that one time we played Red Dead Online, and all I remember is like you were <laughs> riding on your horse ahead of me, and all of a sudden I just see like this body fly through the air, and the whole horse. <laughs> falls into the ground and just dies and then we played poker for three hours that wasn't just one night we kept hopping onto red dead just to play poker and i remember I, like one time i even like linked my twitch account so i could get more money to play poker in the game we gifted dim a copy of red dead online just so he could get on and play poker with us there's probably so many easier ways we could have played poker together but yeah dude, we should have played uh what was it four kings three kings whatever the name is four kings casino couple kings casino yeah there's some kings in it then i have two zombie games that are kind of linked together um and one or actually the sequels so the second games just released like very recently and there will be dying light and dying or dying like two and dead island two obviously they just released right do you think those games will ever get a sequel? That's a hard one. Both of those games had development hell uh, and a lot of delays. So that's really hard to say. I mean, Dead Islands was substantially longer. I think because they have the game built, it would be very easy for them to like use those resources and, fit and assets to do one more Dead Island game. So you're saying they went through hell so they can make the next one easier? kind of just knowing the track record dead island has because they did it with dead island one they like did the riptide right right afterwards and then dead island 2 was literally going to be built right out of dead island one and then they delayed it delayed it redid it all these times later and it just now came out i think they could easily use a lot of the stuff that they built and just you know work on a third game and i feel like that's more likely than dying light because dying light 
has to have like this polish because the first one was received so well it has to kind of stand out more i feel like it's hard to explain exactly what i mean but the expectation and the bar set higher for dying light for what people expect dead island like you know what you're getting you go in you have some fun kill some stuff it's like over the top whatever dying light's a little more serious and narrative and stuff and like the movement and the parkour is so important people aren't going to want to see like a reused location or something like that so i feel like dying light is a lot more work and i feel like that would either be way further off or not at all i don't know if dying lights 2 sold well enough i f yeah i feel like it didn't and i mean all i'm basing that off is because i saw it on say like relatively soon after release apparently it sold okay uh it, it, by february of 2022 it had sold five million units uh it, it's so hard to look at numbers because like there was a time where a million units was like crazy a lot and nowadays it's like some games are like, oh, we did that many. So the way I see it, people will say it, it only sold that many, but for the for the actual like studio, it's probably still like a big dub. You know what I mean? I don't think it changed. Like, if you sold five million copies back then or five million copies now, I mean, obviously the money is worth a little less because of inflation, but like I, it, they're probably still like proud of their work. I think that, I think that's really it. I have here. There was one more joke I wanted to make that I wrote out like a month ago. And okay. uh, I, now I don't know if I want to make it, but... Uh, what was the joke? No, now you okay, have to. Yeah, now I have to. Sorry, sorry. When do you think Beyond Good and Evil 3 is going to come out? <laughs> okay, that was kind of funny. <laughs> Dude, Beyond Good and Evil 2 has been in development for, like, what, 20 years? Something like that, yeah. I don't think it's going to come out. I don't even know Beyond Good and Evil 2 is going to come out. <laughs> I don't think... They keep, I don't know they keep saying it it's going to come out. Every couple of months, they're like, yeah, we're still working on it, guys. Don't worry. I'm just chipping away at it slowly but surely. It's like one guy working on it by himself, locked in the office. Maybe, maybe that's how Ubisoft stays open. Their studios have, like, one or two employees, and that's how they have so many studios, you know? It's like the janitor's passion project after he's done cleaning the thing, and he has a couple hours before anyone has to show up. Well, I think this is a good place to wrap it up. Uh, what did you guys think? What game never got a threequel i still hate that word i don't know i think it's good it's on it's it's a on wikipedia it's in a dictionary you know yeah 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 i mean it's just a silly word that's all uh but let us know in the comments down below huge shout out to our patrons uh their names are on the screen now if you want to have your name just like added to this list uh that'd be really cool especially this time of the year when uh you know like ad revenue is kind of like down in the dumps a bit it's always nice to uh have the support from our patrons uh, so if you want to pledge, you can even pledge just for a select amount of time and then just, you know, do what you want to do. But uh, yeah, for just three bucks, you can uh, support our show, which is really cool. Also, check out our sponsor, Cook Unity. You know, Ooh, use yeah. our link and our code and uh, get yeah, yourself some nice meals. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, make sure you subscribe and notifications on. If you're watching on TV, I know it's like two extra clicks, but we appreciate it. I saw a comment that said he finds it easier to do it on TV than on other devices, you know? So maybe. Nice. Actually, I've noticed that. I start clicking the subscribe button or I try to go to someone's channel and they flipped the channel button and the subscribe button on the YouTube app. So I end up I end up unsubscribing accidentally <laughs> to a lot of the channels that I want to go to the channel to I have to fix it. But I've caught it every time I've done it, I think, so far. Hey, if you're on a TV right now and you're listening to this, make sure you did not unsubscribe. Yeah, just make sure you are subscribed though. Okay. Uh, that's it for today though, guys. We'll see you next week with another video and, uh, it's going to be a good one, I think. So, all right. Bye guys.